for his blessings on this morning. A scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Again, that's the Gospel of Matthew, 14th chapter, verses 22 to 33. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. 
When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, yes. it is I, yes. don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, yes. tell me to come to you on the water. Yes. Come, he said. Yes. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that it is true. The grass withers and the flowers fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To join in with us as we sing our morning hymn, Blessed Assurance. If you know you're blessed, join with us in giving God some praise for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. 
name. Glory to his name. We have a blessed assurance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we have a blessed assurance, we have a story. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. And he's worthy of all the praise. Amen. And amen. And amen. Family, we move now to our, to our prayer period. And we are certainly so mindful of the many prayer concerns and uh, families that are in uh, bereavement. We are grateful for our leadership that are faithful each week in praying and lifting up every family and every concern uh, before us. But we have so uh, many bereavements. We want to lift some of those names uh, on, on this morning and ask you to be in prayer uh, with them as well. Evelyn Harden, uh, who funeralized her sister, we're praying with Sister Harden. Sherry Winston in the passing of her husband. Janice Giles in the passing of her brother, Joanne Clay, in the passing of her mother, Ernestine Bolton. We're certainly praying, Bolton, I'm sorry, we're praying with that family. As well, we'll continue to lift up Pastor Vincent Collins in the passing of his mother, as well as the Lively Stone Church in the passing of Pastor Emeritus Bishop Alfonso Scott. Our music ensemble now will ready our hearts for prayer, so why don't you gather in your homes or wherever you are, and let's prepare to go to God in prayer. Savior Jesus Christ. God, we come before your presence with humbled and gracious hearts. God, we confess that we all fall short of your glory. We thank you, God, for your forgiveness, for your mercy, and for your grace. Thank you, God, for redemption through Jesus Christ. God, we ultimately know that despite all that is happening in, in our world, you are yet sovereign. And God, you are working everything out for our good. So God, today we simply ask you to speak to our hearts and comfort every person and family everywhere who may be struggling through sickness or bereavement or even discouragement. Help us, God, in this season of uncertainty to focus our faith and deepen our trust in your steadfast love and your compassion and in your covering. But truly, God, we have a blessed insurance that you are working everything out on our behalf. God, we certainly pray that you are blessed to preach word on today that we may be strengthened, oh God. Dear Lord, we pray that you are blessing this your vessel, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark. Bless him and keep him, he and his entire family. Then, God, there's so many other things that we could say, but you know the very meditations of our heart. So God, allow the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. And amen.
Praise the Lord, people of God on the day. We join in with the celebratory praise of his matchless name. God is good and he's worthy to, to be praised. There's so much we have to be grateful for, and we are. And we gather at this hour collectively to say thank you. God for all of your rich blessings. I'd like to invite your attention to the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 22 to 35 on this day. On the following day, when the people were standing on the other side of the sea, saw that there was no other boat there except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has sent, set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. This concludes our reading. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Solicit your prayers this morning. I like to lift as a theme to guide our preaching, Jesus, the bread of life. Jesus the bread of life. We did not know that the feeding of many, the 5,000 with limited resources was going to turn into a multi-layered conversation 
that would bring us to the uncovering of the identity of Jesus. That Jesus met them and fed them and that would have been the end of the story. But the people sought Jesus for more. That the feeding points far beyond the bread they ate, brothers and sisters. Jesus' words uh, focus attention on food as something more or other than that which satisfies physical hunger. That bread alone is temporary. That there is something more that is needed to sustain human life. That they ate and were satisfied, but there was something beyond what they had consumed that captured their attention. It was after the feeding that the disciples got into a boat and crossed over to the other side. That was a part of our scripture reading on today. And Jesus, as you well know, did not go with them. Instead, he withdrew to a mountain by himself. And during the evening, while the disciples were crossing the sea, they encountered some difficulties and Jesus came walking to them on the water. And they were afraid until they understood and recognized that it was Jesus. People who knew that Jesus did not travel with the disciples were amazed when they caught up with the disciples to find that Jesus was there also. And they asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? That this question alone with all of the other questions that is a part of this long discourse here in John has more than a geographical concern. But brothers and sisters, it has a lasting theological implication. When did you get here? When did the revealer of God come into the world? When did God send his son and position him on the world stage? And how is it that we have missed this profound revelation? And Jesus responded, he says, you are looking for me not because of the sign I performed, but because of the bread you eat. You see me as really a free grocery provider. Do not work for food that will spoil, he says, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. He, he, he says, you seek me uh, for the food, for the bread that I gave. And I like to underline that did you, you seek me because that's a good thing. That the desire is that all of us would seek Jesus. That's a great thing. However, when we are seeking him, uh, we have to make sure that it's for the right reason. To seek him only for what he can do for us is really the wrong reason for seeking him. To seek him for bread is temporary. That he is much more than a temporary filler. He is the timeless source of life. I would uh, say that again and hope that we would underline that, that, that he is more than a temporary filler. Jesus is, he is the timeless source of life. And so the gift of the feeding 
was to bring attention not just to the bread but also to the giver of the bread who was himself the bread of life that Jesus is offering much more than bread but himself he is offering himself as the bread of life uh, be it well known and I ask that you do your own homework in the chapters leading up to this to discover that there is double meaning in all of the stories that uh, John has lifted thus far. That there are two wines uh, that are at the wedding feast in Cana. There is the wine that runs out and then the wine that Jesus supplies and the master of the feast says that you served or kept the best under last. Uh, have you to know that there are two temples. The one that was built by man and then the one that God sent himself. And Jesus says destroy this temple and in three days I will rise it up, raise it up. Uh, that there are two waters. Uh, one water you draw from Jacob's well and the other is the living water that if drank will become a fountain of living water springing up into eternal life. And then there are two breads. Uh, the bread that has temporary satisfaction and then there is the bread from heaven. And the bread that satisfies uh, is the bread from heaven. In fact, that when you eat of this bread, the text says you'll hunger no more. But I would have uh, you to know that in all of these, one is natural and the other is supernatural. And uh, it is the hope of heaven that we stay in conversation long enough to see the supernatural uh, have an effect in our life. That the woman at the well continued the conversation long enough to discover that Jesus was more than a prophet. In fact, uh, when the conversation was nearing an end, uh, she thought it best that I run to town and leave my water pot and go tell somebody, come meet a man who has told me everything about myself. And so it is ours that if we dare to have a, a hint of spiritual curiosity uh, that uh, we carry on this journey, this conversation with God long enough that a new revelation might develop in our life, uh, that uh, the supernatural still takes place. I think that we are living in a world and in a time where even believers start to think that, that after the natural, that's all. Uh, but the supernatural is at work even, even on today. I saw God show up in the music ministry, in the gifts that he's given people. And they sang from another place. It was not, it was not normal, the place that they were singing from. And only God can do that. But you got to hang out long enough with him for him to start to work his perfect work in you and the text says Jesus answered them and said most assuredly I say to you you seek me not because you saw the signs but because you ate of the loaves and were filled do not labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. That it's, that it's sealed. That Jesus is the bread of life. And here's why. Because God said so. Therefore it is. And secondly, 
they ask, what shall we do that we may work the works of, of God? Jesus answered, uh, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. The work is to believe rather than to work for the gift of God. That they are thinking like the disciples thought in the first portion of the feeding story. They, that they looked at the enormity of the problem and then they glanced at their resources and said, no way. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that that when you look at the problem and you can't see the problem solver, uh, then when you cast your eyes upon yourself, then there will always be the shortage in the end. Uh, and so they were wanting to know about the work. Yeah. Uh, how does this work? Uh, how do we work our way to this? And it is incumbent upon Jesus to tell them that uh, this doesn't come by work. It comes by way of the gift of God. That, that the gift of God is at work. And so if you want to work, then your work is to believe in him who I've sent. Uh, uh, that... Uh, they were, in essence, uh, trying to see how this could, could work. Now, now, now I'm, I'm hesitant to, to go here because we have lived through some propositions that would be awfully good. And some very intelligent people have said to us that if something is too good to be true, uh, then there's a chance that it is not. Uh, that someone that's making you an offer that you cannot refuse uh, would almost invite us to read the fine print. And so this, this offer that Jesus is making to the disciples uh, is... Uh, 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 so outlandish, so out of the realm of the norm, so much a part of the impossibility until it is incumbent upon them to then ask, what does it cost? That anything like this uh, as, as profoundly uh, irresistible as this is has to cost something and Jesus said yes it does the cost is to believe on the one whom God has sent it's interesting that the political argument that's happening in Congress has to do with resources that about 40 million Americans uh, will need like right now as they tunnel through this pandemic that just a couple of days ago uh, they failed to extend the unemployment uh, that would keep not just the economy going but uh, uh, individual families it would keep them from going other that so many families are facing evictions and there's just a lot of stuff going on. And so, and so the, the gift of the government would have been to continue uh, these resources to extend it to these families who can't help themselves right now. There's some who've argued in Congress that if you extend the unemployment and it's more than what you're paying them, then they may opt to not go back to work. Personally, personally, I don't know anybody that doesn't want to work. I don't surround myself with people who don't want to make an honest living. Everybody that I know wants to make an honest living. And if $600 a week, if you think that's too much, uh, then perhaps you need to move out of that bubble that you've been living in. 
because when you got as many as many concerns as most families have, $600 a week can only go so far. Permit me to say that it is important that we vote people into office that have a godly heart and who understand uh, the human predicament. Not to say anything about the people that they deny access to or people who pay taxes. It would be nice if those who uh, are underserved and underpaid would get a tax break. The uh, millionaires and billionaires, they get the tax break and, and others are left to carry the load for everybody. And so um, it, would, it would be good in this season if this text would come into play. People who, who know where their next everything is coming from won't appreciate a text like this. A text like this won't speak to them. If you, if you can have your mortgage paid and you don't have to worry about that, this text doesn't mean much to you. If you know where your next meal is coming from, then this text doesn't mean much to you. That if you, if you were born on third base with a, with a silver or golden shovel in your mouth, then this text doesn't, doesn't apply to you. Only, only those who have a keen sense of needing and depending on God that have had to trust God every step of the way. This story is meaningful. And so there have been so many things that have pressed our back against the wall. When we hear propositions such as just simply believe God, we want to find out if it's true. Because everything that we've tried to do and do right, something has always gotten in the way. And so I just want to make a sidetrack here and say it's important for us in November. I don't care what's happening. Pandemic, like, we got to make our ways to the polls. That there that, been some interference going on even at the post office. That they're trying to slow down the mail because... Uh, a lot of people intend to do mail-in votings. I want to make a strong suggestion here this morning, and that is, if at all possible, you can get to the polls without having to send in your ballot through the mail, put on your mask and, and uh, put on your winter robe, uh, uh, garb up and get to the get to the polling place and cast your ballot and do it that way uh, because when one door is locked uh, there ought to be another way that you can get in and if they block the door we'll come through the window if they block the window we'll come through the roof but we will not be denied because we've seen this evil at work I'm trying not to go too far here, but there's something to be said about persons who just in your face would try to destroy the order that we've had along the way. And so I'll say it again, that persons who have it all together and persons who have food in the box and persons who were born into resources may not appreciate this text. And I doubt if this text is even preached in places that have resources because it won't make the appropriate connection. But there are those persons who, who don't have anything left but to trust God. Hallelujah. And Jesus says that the work you ought to do is simply to believe. And I think this is the season when that's all we have because everything else has been stripped from us. And the only thing that we've got to hold on to is a belief in God 
that he is God's, Jesus is God's gift to us. And when that's all you got, you hold on to it and you believe in everything that he says. Hallelujah. I'll be honest with you on today that uh, I wish I did have a whole lot I could leave uh, to other people just write checks and I don't have it like that. But what I can give you is the assurance that somehow, some way, God will always work it out. There's some kind of way God will always come through. Yeah, I heard grandma and them say that he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. I wish I had somebody that knew what I was talking about. That somehow, some way, the Lord always makes a way. Somehow, I don't even know who I'm talking to. But there's somebody that's listening to me. That you've been trusting him every step of the way. Because that's all you have. Hallelujah. When, when your job is threatening to dismiss you and you don't know where your next anything is coming from, you can rest assured that God knows and God has your back. Hallelujah. Uh, so they also, I got to hurry up and get out of your way. But they also say uh, that they need a sign. What sign will you show us that we might believe? Uh, what work will you do? Is what they say. That our father ate the manna in the desert as it is written. And he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Yeah, that they wanted a sign, brothers and sisters. That they wanted God to do what God had done and continues to do in their presence. That, that what God uh, has done, he continues to do for you and I. Yeah, that they couldn't believe because it did not fit, fit their category of imagination. That they couldn't see how God was going to work it out. Uh, please hear me, brothers and sisters, because I know that I'm talking to somebody and you're stressing in these days of uh, uh, pure anxiety. You're stressing. Your, your back is against the wall. You, you fighting uh, depression along with everything else because it appears that everything is caving in on you at the same time. But I want you to know that uh, without even knowing how he does it, but our God is able our God is able, and you've got to fit that into the categories of your imagination, knowing that somehow that our God is able, that, that we can't preclude that, that God is finished because of uh, it not looking like it's taking place in our life. But they lift up Moses as an example. They bring up a scripture reference uh, before Jesus about what God had done. They bring up Moses and if, and if God had uh, uh, fed the children, their ancestors through Moses, they wonder if he could do it again. Well, I want you to look at, I want you to look at how that lines up. That uh, they bring up Moses. Now, now, the reason they're able to bring up Moses is because God freed the children from the oppressive hand of a Pharaoh. 
And when he, when he freed them, he brought them across the Red Sea uh, in the dry land. So if you notice in the text, there is this mentioning of Jesus who walks across the water when the disciples are in trouble and he calms that situation and he gets them to the point now where in, in this new wilderness that they find themselves, they wonder, is God able to take care of them? And I'm here to tell you that if he did it for Israel and if he worked through Moses, God says, I got one better for you. I'm not going, I'm not going to give you the bread. I'm bringing it myself. Then I'm going to wrap myself up in flesh and I'm going to tabernacle with you. And so what you're looking for, you're really looking at because the sign you seek, I am he. I am the bread of life. If you want to know if I know how to make a way out of no way, you need to just look at me. You see, I'm almost done here, but when I was younger, I, would, I, remember, uh, I remember being upset at the packaged gift that I received that it didn't look like all the others. And I remember being hesitant about opening it uh, because I didn't want to further my disappointment. I was looking at my little gift and looking at others whose gift seemed to have been more. And I, I, I was wishing that somebody else had pulled my name. And then I opened it. And when I opened it, it was more than I could ask for. That, that brothers and sisters, the package uh, did not look like what was reflected on the inside. In fact, the gift had lasting value because of what was on the inside. Yeah, I submit to you this morning that uh, there's a whole lot of people who have a problem believing because of the package that Jesus is wrapped in. That God wrapped him up in this normal package. It would have been different if God had to put some bells and whistles on him. But God didn't put bells and whistles on him. God, God just gave him the normal. And if you hung out with him and you open the package, one revelation would lead to another and then you would discover that this is God's great I am. And in the text he says, I am the bread of life. And if you're hungry, fellowship with me and you'll never hunger, nor will you thirst again. That the sign that they were looking for was right in front of them. He's the true bread that came from heaven. He's the bread of life. And that Jesus is what you call essential. Yeah, that the basic diet of most people have some bread in it. Yeah, white bread and brown bread, flat bread, rye bread, caressing bread. Yeah, bread, bread. There's some bread in it. Yeah, and, and so don't be surprised in the first century when others heard Jesus talk about that daily bread, they knew exactly what he was talking about. And so when we pray, we always ask, Lord, give us this day our daily, our daily bread. That is, Lord, meet our needs because you and you alone know what our needs are hallelujah and so listen when you when you when you sit down to eat again make sure that you take a moment and you bless that bread yeah you bless the food that the lord has given you that there's so many people who who uh, don't have anything to eat but they have an appetite 
And then here we are. We, we, we have an appetite, but sometimes we don't know where our bread coming from. But on today, you can thank God for both appetite and bread. You can thank him that he's met every need. And even if you don't see it coming, don't let that stop you. Go on and set the table. Yeah, because you already anticipate, even though you can't see it, you already anticipate that God is going to make a way somehow. I leave you now. I leave you now, but, but this bread of life is the best thing that ever happened to us. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can hear him saying that take, eat. This is my body. Broken. Broken for you. This is my shed blood for the remission of sin. Yeah, that, that he who God sent uh, to be our company keeper, our bridge over troubled waters. Yeah, our way out of no way. He who God sent went all the way to the cross. Yes, he did. I gotta go there. He went all the way to the cross, bowed his head, and he died. Every, every Christian in the world yeah, or wants to join in when we say he died. Yes, he did. He bowed his head and he died. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. And they took him down and put him in a borrowed tomb. Didn't he do it? But early on the third day morning, he got up with all power, heaven and earth in his hand. I wish I had strength to really preach this word today. But while I am weak, the Lord is strong. And so Lord, I'm counting on you to take your word, uh-huh, and let it penetrate through these cameras and be a blessing to somebody. I'm glad that he woke us up this morning and he started us on our way he gave us health and strength is it anybody here no my Jesus have you tried him if you tried him you gotta know he's alright I heard somebody say guide me over my great Jehovah pilgrim through this barren land I am a weak but thou almighty hold me with thy powerful hand bread of heaven bread of heaven feed me till I want no more I need to ask you one more thing and then I'm out of your way. Do you really know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? You ought to lift that hand and just wave your hand and tell God thank you for making a way out of no way. Shout yeah. bread of life he is the bread of life while heads are bowed and eyes are closed eternal and everlasting God we love you so much for how you keep on blessing us Lord I ask you for every person that's under the sound of my voice, every family that's holding on to this word, that you keep them even when it looks impossible right now. I 
I don't even know how this word is going to register, God, but you already know. And while so many in power are playing politics with the lives of people, God, we believe. And we believe that you're going to show up. Single mothers looking to see how they take care of their families. This whole school situation is in disarray. Our leaders are saying that there's no disease and yet deaths are happening by the thousands every day. And Father, we call on you because you're all we have. We don't sit in the boardroom. We don't have bank accounts. All we have is you. And Father, I pray you bless your word because I was trying to convey what you gave to me. And that is we, we place our hope, our belief, our trust in you. And so, Mother and father, leader of the households, we ask God to cover our children. We ask him to protect us as we've got to get out in all of this dangerous pandemic because we are essential. We ask God, God take care of us. Father, we confess that so often this moment has been used by so many to promote themselves. God, I pray now by the power of the Holy Spirit that you reign supreme. And that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For that person that whose head is bowed that don't know you, I pray the Holy Spirit would usher them into a relationship with you. And there's so many other things that we would say. But Father, we cast our cares on you because we know you care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. All right, Shalom, I got to go. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Father. Be glory, dominion, majesty, Shalom, I love you. Good morning, Shalom. This is Deacon Frank Foster. Hope you're doing well and praying for the health and safety of you, family, and friends in these unique times. If you're like me and my family in quarantine and we like to cook, there's a little bit more around my waist than the last time we got together, but God is still good all the time. I'm here with a couple of reminders. As though we are socially distanced, we still need to stay spiritually connected. First is to continue to be faithful in our tithes and offerings. Our church ministries and community outreach and support are supported by your tithes and offerings as our single source of support. But not only that, God wants you to experience the complete fullness of his blessings, and we do that through our tithes and offerings. 
He says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That means everything we have comes from and belongs to God. We're just simply stewards of it. What he requires is our ties, as it is holy unto God. The beautiful part is you can be God-giving. He says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. That's God's promise. So I encourage you to continue healthy giving. And if you haven't started, God says, test me and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven towards you. In these days, it's the perfect time to start. Our finance ministry has made it easy for you to give. You can call it in. You can use an envelope and mail it in or drop it off the church. Use the Shalom website. That's what I use. I love it. Or you can text it in using the text number on the screen. Final reminder is to reach out and stay connected with the saints in ministry and church. There is so much technology we can use, and God has hit the pause button so we can reflect and refocus on the one thing Jesus summed up in one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. We can socially distance and still practice fellowship. I'm pretty sure that you got one of these. If not, a letter, email, or a simple phone call will brighten somebody's heart today and yours. Remember, true giving starts in the heart whether your ties, your love, your time, or your talents. So these are your reminders. Miss you and can't wait until we're all together again. May God bless you richly and shalom.